Hi, this is Natalie Lander, voice of Kinsey, Tara Brandford, Stargirl, and many others. You are listening to a W2Mnet podcast. You can visit W2Mnet.com for other podcasts about entertainment, video games, sports, and wrestling. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Talk to Cake Podcast. This is the pilot here. I am Matthew, and this is my co-host, Ethan, and we're going to be talking about anime. Ethan, what's up? What's up, man? How you doing? Uh, Not too bad. Uh, This is going to be our first time working together, so it's my first time doing an anime podcast, so this is definitely going to be something interesting. Same, same, same. Looking forward to it. I've already got two podcasts already, so... Um, adding a third one to the list uh, with something that I am beyond passionate the other two about. So hey, <laughs> all right. Well, <laughs> this good. well, this is my second one too. So all right, since so this is our show, I f- believe you have the setup with you right in front of you. No, I don't. All <laughs> right, <laughs> <laughs> you you can see where this is gonna go, ladies and gentlemen. All right, we'll get. It's just the pilot. It's just the pilot. Shit's gonna get yeah. better. By the way, parental advisory for anybody that is listening out there, please. I hope you're not listening around children. If you are, um, listen at your own risk, I guess. Yeah, yeah, and or listen with headphones. Uh, actually, we just we should just talk about what we're what we do here, basically. If anything, that makes more sense. Uh, we basically get to review seasonal animes that we're both watching together, watching on our own. Mm-hmm. Uh, animes to recommend in general. Like whether mm-hmm. it's a, whether it's classic, new movie, mm-hmm. uh, we're also mm-hmm. gonna be talking about a uh, certain news of whatever gets adapted, mm-hmm. and um, you know that type of thing. That whatever like, a manga series is ending, whoever passes away, uh, basically anything anime slash manga related or even light novel, we're gonna be talking about it here. Whatever happens mm-hmm. during the course of the week. Exactly, and this is brought to you guys uh, at the behest of the group, the Eat the Cake Anime Group. For anybody that's listening out there that is not part of Eat the Cake Anime Group, you can find us on Facebook by searching Eat the Cake Anime. Um, Right now, you should see the group photo is a uh, commemoration piece to the uh, manga artist for Berserk, who had passed away this week, unfortunately, um, at the tender age of 54 due to illness. So rest in peace to him. And uh, if anybody out there is listening is not already a member, please join us. Uh, We are a even though we're 500 members deep, we are, I would say, fairly tight. You know, we everybody gets along with everybody. Uh, it's plenty of laughs all around. It's easy to integrate yourself, and it's easy for us to help integrate you into uh, our weeb, weebdom. And, uh, yeah, it, it's a wonderful time. So anybody out there uh, that's not already a member, please join us. For all the members out there that requested um, a podcast, this is it for you guys, ladies and gentlemen. Yep, and again, uh, definitely a major loss. And I, I love the Berserk series, and it's just really sad to see the author pass away, especially like that. Mm-hmm. So we don't know the future of what's going to happen with it, but uh, again, our thoughts with, with his family and loved ones at this time. <laughs> mm-hmm. Indeed, indeed. So, what are you uh, watching this week, Matthew? Go ahead and uh, lead us in. What are you? Uh... All right. Uh... Oh, I'm behind on about six of them, six or seven, because a uh, busy schedule. Yeah, I'm behind but, on four, same thing. But uh, we have, I we have seen a good amount. Uh, I've watched uh, Vivi, Third Eyes, and yes. it's, that is just beautiful. Still, you ch- yeah, you, you definitely champion Vivi out of the group this season. That is your breakout anime of the season. I can definitely tell. So far, yes, as uh, it's basically if you love ReZero, the creator, like the, I think the writer is involved in this project. So it's definitely some fantastic writing in it. The animation is beautiful. Yeah, I can, uh, yeah definitely. So I've it, seen the previews on that. It definitely does look gorgeous. That's one thing for sure. Yeah, so yeah, that's definitely something to check out. Songs are great too. For because even though it's not Jesus singing Android, there are songs, but it's. So you know what turned me off to VV? I because I watched recently. Um, ah, damn it! Now I'm forgetting the name. Um. Oh, I forget that. Oh God! Hold on, let me pull it up real quick. I, I watched an anime with an android, and it was like I thought it was okay. Like my my nephew is the one who recommended it to me, and I was like, okay, cool. You know, I'll watch it, and I watched it, and I was like, all right, it's all right. But like, I felt like a little disappointed. I just turned off Planetarian. That's the one I watched. I have not watched so, that one. <laughs> you you said you have or you haven't? I have not. No, you so have, I really so, I really can't speak yeah. for it. 
Yeah, I just like so it's about long story short for Planetarian, it's about um uh Android who is left behind after a nuclear war in a city and um right. thirty years after the fact it comes online around the same time that uh a, a person called the Junker, which are basically scavengers uh within the city right, right. comes into this planetarian and basically the guy befriends the uh befriends the 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 android and they become close at, over and it's a very short series it's about i think four episodes and they're only 20 minutes a piece uh the japanese version is about 20 minutes so it is it's short and it's not a bad anime i'm not gonna shit all over it like it, it's very nice and it could be touching depending on how you feel about animes but i just i don't know i felt after watching something with an android i was like eh, i don't uh, know uh, I, I i truly believe this one would change your mind <laughs> With <sighs> how with how different how unique it is, yeah. uh, the story story simple like uh, and a robot from the future says, "Hey, we gotta prevent this chaotic thing happen from a hundred years ago, so we gotta change stuff in history." And mm-hmm. so and and Vivi or Diva is conflicted because she's only made for singing, so she wants mm-hmm. to sing. So he's making her go for all this despite what she was made for. But uh, mm-hmm. it's definitely. Definitely a lot of character conflicts with the androids, the humans, mm-hmm. and just and again animation, music, and just and even the very few fight scenes we get. They, they're I good. I was just about to ask, like, how's the action look like? Because it's, oh, it's not too action, action based, but yeah. Uh, there, there's definitely there's definitely enough action in some of these episodes to keep you interested. Mm-hmm. And again, and again, it's mostly character. It's mostly character driven, like how ReZero was. <laughs> right, 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 yeah. for sure. Well, I mean, ReZero is just a whole different beast when it comes to, to uh, character character development and investing in characters before you get to the... Uh, the ReZero is a, ma- a masterpiece. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. I totally Thanks. agree. Like, I can't I, wait till season three, and hopefully we don't have to wait another four years for that. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, uh, as of right now, that's my favorite of the year so far, but we got to see what we got because we're only halfway through the years. Yeah, right, basically. Um, so you're the champion of Vivi. I'm the champion of 86. So I know you post a lot about Vivi in the group. I post a lot about 86 along with Angel. Um, and I think you are watching 86, right? Or you know, uh, I am not. I do want to, though. Oh, uh, so 86. I, I just compare it to like a, a, a light version, a new gen version of Code Geass. Reason being okay. is there's crazy mech action and the the actual story that has to do with segregation and discrimination against another like race or species for whatever reason xyz reason um it it, it's very very poignant very telling and and it reminds me so much of of code of code geass there is even a a blooming love between the two main characters that it's a slow burn um but that's not the focal point of the story the focal point of the story is, is how um the main one of the main characters overcomes the uh the the discrimination that is going on while simultaneously battling um this i guess a robotic fleet of some sort um at the same time while dealing with this person who's whose clan i guess or whose nation discriminates against them but she's starting to fall for him and she genuinely cares about them as a whole due to a traumatic experience that happened in her life involving uh someone of their kind so I champion the hell out of it because the action is amazing. The story is very touching when it comes to to, to dealing with the discrimination and the hatred uh, of groups for zero reason, as far as we're aware of, um, or at least as what's been revealed through the seven episodes that have gone on. So um, that is my breakthrough that I recommend to people um, from my side. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to find time to binge it to try to catch up in time because it, it does look really interesting. I love Code Geass, so... <laughs> Yeah, man. Code Geass is another masterpiece. I I will at some point watch Vivi. There's just ah, oh, there's so many. I'm watching 21 different weekly series E's right now. I'm still trying to finish JoJo, which I haven't watched in weeks. Um, yeah. and then I have at least 80 different anime on my list uh, that's on my phone, not including ones that is not on my phone. Yeah. So it's it's such a struggle to keep up with the content that's out there. Oh nowadays, yeah. Everything yeah, is just that's, so that's interesting. why that's why I'm just watching mostly seasonals for right now. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Because those, exactly. those are easy to do. If I don't, if I'm not watching anything, I'll probably put something new on. But yeah, it is, it is definitely a struggle. So especially when you work. 
No, yeah, same thing, dude. I'm I'm in the process of getting a new job, so um, right. I'll be starting that soon. So hopefully, I'll be going to a day shift because I work nights. So I'm gonna see how that's gonna affect my my viewing schedule. But uh, um, I sh- things should stabilize. Hopefully, I just got a girlfriend too, hence why I'm exhausted today. So oh, um, that'll be interesting. Yeah, I mean, she well, congrats on that. Watching- Thanks, man. But you know, I, I'm happy as hell. She doesn't mind watching anime. Like we watched a little bit of anime last night, and this morning when we woke up, I, I watched Boruto while we ate breakfast. And she was, you know, she doesn't know jack shit about it, but she was just interested enough to to focus on it from what she saw. So I'm, I'm appreciative. So hopefully that'll uh, that'll help me out. And uh, yeah, my uh, watch what, you call it? what you call it? My partner watches a select shows with me. So yeah, yeah, no, I get it. So yeah, and usually when we're because yeah, they're, they're actually watching Re Zero with me. Because I already finished it, but they're almost done with season two. It's so hard for me to want to go back and watch other anime, dude. Because it's like I've already seen it. Like she, so she's seen anime. She's not a novice to anime. Um, I guess with her ex boyfriend, yeah. she watched some anime because I guess he was into it. And so she mentioned she was watching Erased, and um, it was another anime on Netflix. I think she was watching or Hulu. Um, there was a couple different animes that she mentioned that I've seen already, and I was like, oh, those are really good. You know, you should watch it. And so I'm gonna recommend stuff as we go along with that, but. Yeah, um, I, I yeah. usually I usually don't mind rewatching stuff if it's like really good. Like I'll like I'll yeah. watch I'll watch ReZero anytime. I'll watch Violet Evergarden. I'll watch which is called Full Metal Brotherhood. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. yeah. I, I, I have no problem if it's someone that I really enjoy and I want someone else to watch. Like I'll I don't mind watching it with them. I love telling people about it. I'll show them clips or I'll watch an episode, but I just, I can't go back and watch a whole series because there's just, like I said, so much content that I want to get to. It's like, I hate going back. I mean, there's certain series that I will like love to the end of time and I would rewatch it given the circumstance. Like um, Fruit Baskets now, I adore Fruits Baskets. That's one of my favorites of the season and favorites as a whole. So whenever that comes out, the complete series comes out on Blu-ray, I will buy that. Um... Uh, what else? Uh, Evergarden is another fabulous one. That movie was sensation. I know you haven't seen the movie yet, or have you? Got I a know. To see I'm, 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 ho- I'm hoping by summertime if it comes out by then. <laughs> oh my god, dude! I tell people all the time with Violet Evergarden, it is the most complete ending to a series ever. It is flawlessly executed as far as I'm concerned. It is honestly one of my favorite anime movies that I've possibly ever seen. Mugen Train is by far the best action I've ever seen, but in terms of wholeness and completeness, Violet Evergarden, honest to God, to me, it blows away um, Your Name and Weathering With You, two movies that are synonymous with sensational anime flicks that I adore as well, but as far as I'm concerned, the Violet Evergarden movie, oh my god. I literally spent, I would say, at least half of the movie and at least the last, I think the last hour of that movie, sobbing. Right. Full on sobbing in the movie theater because of how powerful and how sensational that end was. So I can't recommend that enough for people out there. Yeah, if you so haven't seen Violet Evergarden series, watch it. And if you can get a chance to watch the actual final movie, please do. Because it is worth every single tear you will shed and every happy moment you'll feel at the end. Yeah, because funny enough, uh, while I haven't watched the movie, I actually read the the light novels because I actually had the light novels printed. Oh, like, you, I, already, I, you already know what's gonna happen. Uh that's the thing. This was different from what I've from like very like pictures I've seen. This is a lot different compared to the novels. <laughs> is it? So oh, they, yeah. don't, they don't they uh, don't keep it linear with the story, even if they change some of the scenes. Uh no, that's the thing. Like a lot, like some of the stuff in the anime was original compared to the the, the light novel. Oh, okay. And, and like, like you know, with the you know, with the mother, with the dying mother. Yes. Yeah, but, that oh was that God. was that that was the first. Yeah, oh yeah, that was the first chapter in the light novel. <laughs> that's the very first chapter. Yeah, that's like the that's like the early chapter. So I'm gonna tell you, just not a, not quite a spoiler, but the dying mother episode yeah. is a huge foundational piece to the movie, because that's how the first ten minutes starts off in the same house, and oh, that's all. Okay. Yeah, the first like 10 15 minutes of the show, it I, I, or I didn't say about 10 minutes, probably about the first 10 minutes of, of this of the the, the movie yeah. starts out in that same house and then it builds from there. That whole premise of the dying mother's episode um, right. it, it plays an integral role in in the series. That's actually that's actually good then. <laughs> It is sensational, and that is one of the for people who haven't watched Violet Evergarden. Once you get to that, that's probably the most. I would say that's probably the most emotional episode of the um of the series, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, you know, it may be you may think the uh, when you watch the flashbacks of um of Violet and the Major. I I, I think um, like from the director up until the dying soldier, like the that straight through were all emotional. Yeah, 
It's all emotional. Like uh, one of the other emotional yeah. ones was where she gets the parasail when she gets the 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 the, the guy who's a yeah. drunkard who's missing yeah, his what, wife. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Daughter, uh, that, like, that was yeah, where yeah. it started. And as, yeah, when it got yeah, to I the mother, I was like, I needed a break. I need a break. <laughs> I, I binged it, dude. Uh, but I was, dude, I binged. I was in. Oh God, I finished. I had just finished Clan Ad, which is a, a goddamn masterpiece and a heart wrenching anime. Oh, and I was like, oh, so let's good. watch Bunny Girl. <laughs> let's watch. Let's watch Burner Girl Senpai. So I watched Bunny Girl Senpai. And I, that was another masterpiece that I loved. And then I was like, all right, let me, I got to wait for the movie. So I bought the movie and I was like, I'm waiting for it to come in. And I was like, what else can I watch? I was like, let's watch Violet Evergarden. So I was just tearjerker after tearjerker after tearjerker oh that whole That's... summer of, of the pandemic, dude. I Jesus spent Christ. so many hours crying, dude. And I'm I'm not afraid to to, to, to say that I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a guy who cries a lot when it comes to anime because anime makes me so happy. And there's so many things that make me emotional about it because I can reflect back on life and just circumstance, and so I'm not afraid to be. Yeah, the, the I, w- I was like, I was like that with, with a silent voice. <laughs> I ball during a silent voice. Uh, I watched the... that. Literally, I was like, I'm gonna go out like to watch a fight, and I was like, ah, I got some time. I was like, let's watch a silent voice. That was a stupid mistake and an amazing decision at the same time. <laughs> it was so amazing. A, a silent voice. I'm so grateful it was on Netflix. Uh, it is. Oh my god. Yeah, I Incredible. saw that in theaters. <laughs> Oh my god, dude! I can't imagine seeing it in theaters because I saw it just—I saw it on my couch and I was just a mess the whole time. I was shocked, like I felt like ReZero shock with Clan Ad like tears. In, right, in right. Watching that, it was just so amazing. Anyway, we let's get back on track because we're supposed let's to talk about for some people. happier. Yeah, let's let's talk about some happier uh, anime. Uh, Tokyo Revengers. Have you seen the new episode? Yes, I did. Oh my god, so it's good. So, it's so, like, it's such a, a mind fuck with them, like, going back in time, then forward in time, and back in time, and forward in time, and then now, and it's the like... the same day, yeah. It's the same yeah, day when you go a, back. Exactly. And then, like, the crazy, at the end, for those who haven't seen the episode, spoiler alert, um, if you watch the previous episode, episode six, I believe it was, episode, yes. let's see what episode six, where's Avengers? God damn it, I just have it on the thing. Yeah, episode six of Avengers, um, Mikey goes back in time, uh, not Mikey. I'm sorry. Um, God, Takamichi goes back in time yeah, because Mikey and uh, and Draken are gonna fight, and Draken's gonna get stabbed and die. So it turns out in the next episode, he still can't break that cycle. Draken's not dead yet because they're two days away from the big fight. And I, I kind of chuckled at the end because um, what's it called? You see Takamichi about to go ape shit because they just destroyed every single one of his prized possessions. Right. <laughs> which I don't know why the hell they were outside in the first place. That makes like zero sense. Like, oh, why is all your stuff that you love outside? Yeah, like so the, they could the, throw ga- the game, the Game Boy. Uh, yeah, like the, yeah the, like, the, the, There's no garage. There's no garage there. Yeah, dude. Like that made no sense to me. But no, Revengers is a, is a great anime. Um, it's an underrated anime. I'm not gonna say it's one of my favorites. Um, Megalobox, Fruits Baskets, um, eighty six. I think it's I think it's one of my favorite OPs though. It is. Yeah, it's a good one. It's good. Yeah. I think my favorite, I my favorite OP's got to be, I love Fruit Baskets OP. I love, oh, which one is it? Let me go back. Uh, because I'm, I have my analyst out right now, so I'm watching right, it. Right. Uh, oh God, Moriarty's OP is one of the best ones. Oh my God, um, yes. <laughs> Moriarty's is one of the best ones. Koikimo, I hate. So we'll talk about Koikimo in a second, but the Kokimo OP, one of the best ones that's out there. It, it's a great OP. Snow White Notes is a good OP. Um, Mars Red isn't bad. Joran isn't bad. Um, yeah, those are the one. And eighty six isn't bad either. Um, but eh, no, nah, I don't know. Eighty six is all right. I'm not gonna say that actually. And of course, Soma Spider. <laughs> so what? Everyone loves Soma Spider. So what? Um, it's a I, I, I actually have that. I I stopped watching. <laughs> you stopped watching it? I, I stopped like uh, during the first half. <laughs> Really? Why? What? What? Didn't... I, I I think it was just the animation was the the CGI was a little too much with the spiders. Yeah, I I can see that, but and, I, I it, was just, not... it was just it was just it was just not enough not enough. Like, uh, you know, what? I got these other ones to watch. Like, I have a uh, Moshiku Tensei. Oh, I'm so disappointed that they pushed it back to October, dude. I, I was looking forward to that. Yeah, that October's and... gonna be insane. If to- oh, yeah. October. 
insane between Mashoka Tensei Court Tour, um, uh, Shield Hero Season 2, uh, Demon Slayer, supposedly, is coming out Season 2. Right. Um, Comey Can't Communicate, which is a highly anticipated rom-com for those that, that love rom-coms out there. I'm looking forward to that one. Um, so there's a lot of bangers that are coming out in October. And sometime next month, we got one the final Wonder Egg Priority episode. Oh, my God. I'm not looking forward to it. Like, I... It's gonna be a series finale, so I, it has to be something good. But it, I, I wonder if it's gonna be thirty minutes. If if it's gonna be like an hour special, like you know, what I mean, like kind of like a re-zero. I don't know, man. Like, I'm looking forward to it, but at the same time, like I, I I'm not prepared for the my, hurt. That my, I'm gonna my problem was this probably would have been my favorite of the year if it didn't have that recap episode after being burnt down from Hori Mia and uh, Promise Neverland season yeah. two. Yeah. I fucking trash. Promise Neverland season two is trash. Ladies and gentlemen, yes. Promise Neverland season one was fantastic. Don't waste your time and don't like get disappointed by watching season two. Yeah. Or if you don't watch season two, you can stop after episode four because one through four wasn't bad. After episode four, it takes a fucking dive down the shitter, ladies and oh gentlemen. Oh my God. I, I got not, My, my friend told me and I was so now. mad. I was like, no. <laughs> I, stuck, I stuck through it. I stuck through it. And I watched I the whole too, thing. And I was like, and nope, I, I wanted I to throw my phone at the TV at how atrocious the final few episodes were. And that, that ending was just fucking atrocious. Fucking that it is the worst ending to an anime I've ever seen. And granted, I've only been watching anime consistently for about four years, but it is the by bar none, the absolute shittiest end to a, a, right. a series, a great series at that. Cause season one was fantastic. I watched season one right before season two came out. I got to binge it beforehand and right. I was like, Oh, this is sensational. I can't wait for season two. First few episodes of season two. This isn't bad. And some people were starting to complain. I was like, no, 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 no. This is pretty good. I can deal with this. And then it just, fucking just took a nosedive dude i was like come on man it was terrible but i know you mentioned horror mia horror mia is also one of my favorites from last season that was that uh, was really good <laughs> i adore hori and mia mirror and you know it's funny i wrote that on my instagram page on my personal instagram page um i posted the the scene where they were listening to each, each other's heartbeats during the uh during the the the, the rain scene right before they had sex All right. and, yeah. Thing about how like amazing it is <laughs> like not I mean not just like obviously the sexual shit but like just in principle just the right. the whole idea of, of that moment so a, a special intimate moment that was non sexual with the person that you've fallen in love with was fucking sensational and I love I wish they would do spin offs so we could see what happens with um with uh, the oh, other characters God. yeah with the other characters like I would love to see what would happen specifically with um with their with the two best friends and I'm forgetting right, the names right. driving nuts. Uh, and they're similar too, and I'm forgetting their names, and it's gonna drive me mad. But yeah, I want to see what happens with them. I mean, it, it, they, like we're just gonna remain friends, like friends with benefits, like friends that are, are stupid and don't love each other or like each other. Like, what is going on with that? Like, like, and I, one of my favorite characters that didn't have much feature but had uh, important parts when she did was her sister, uh, homegirl's sister. Um, that was like, oh, telling her, ah, God, this is gonna drive me mad that I don't. Hold on, let me. I'm gonna look it up. The hell with this. Um, but she was like, yeah, you don't ever say what you want, and this is why you don't get the things that you want. Da 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 da. da. And I was like, wow, man, that, that's really, really poignant, and it definitely put an impression on me. Where is Hori Mio? Where is her? Is Hori Mio? Let me click on this. And, and you didn't see the new Mega Low Box yet, right? I have not seen the newest episode of Mega Low Box, but Mega Oh Lo my this God. This season's Megalo Box is uh, season two of Megalo Box is one of the in a, another breakout anime of the season. It is at least two to three times better than Megalo Box one, which I thoroughly enjoyed myself. Yeah. Uh, Yoshikawa, Yoshikawa, and Ishikawa. That's who I was speaking about for Orange. Okay, very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, no, going back to Megalo Box, it is a sensation. It is heart wrenching. The first couple episodes, seeing uh, Joe be a, a, a pill addict and, and vomiting every fucking ten minutes because uh, he can't get his shit straight, and then seeing that process and seeing him, you know, get clean and um, with uh, uh, oh, what's his name? Um, the uh, the Mexican guy. What's his name? Uh, jo senior. Chief? Chief, Chief? Chief, 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 Chief. Yeah, seeing how he developed that friendship with Chief and um. Yeah, dude, it was it, it was wonderful, and then to see that climax of like he just passed away out of nowhere, like that was sad, and then just to see him and understand, like I was so happy when they revealed that he wasn't a, a complete and absolute piece of shit that just ditched the kids and everybody, like he actually just listened to Sachio when Sachio was being a complete dick to him, um, 
Yeah, I was really grateful for that. And to see now he's slowly but surely trying to mend those fences. Um, I'm looking forward to it. So I, obviously the this uh, episode, I believe, of Megalobox is uh, the fight itself between... Oh, my, uh, my, my your... jaw dropped. <laughs> really? Was the fight that great? No, just just trust me. <laughs> oh, oh, I can't, I can't, oh. I can't, I can't spoil anything. But it was just holy fuck. <laughs> all right, well, but I'll I'll let, I'll write in the comments when we post this. Or I'll, I'll, I got to do the thread when we're done because I'm in charge of the thread. I haven't all done right. the thread yet. All so right. I'll do the thread. When done. And we'll, and we'll speak of what we have seen. Uh, to your eternity. <laughs> I, you know something? It's warming up to me. The first, the first episode was good. The second and third episode, I just, I, March was so annoying. Like March reminded me so much of uh, of Somali from Somali and the Forest Spirit. And right. you know, if if you have a child or you have a little sister, um, specifically if you have a child that's a daughter, like I think that is a wonderful show for you, and it will definitely get you emotional. I, I recommended to a friend who has two daughters, and he was a crying wreck watching Somali and the Forest Spirit. But March right. reminded me so much of Somali. And for me personally, I wasn't a big fan of it. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't, you know, uh, I wasn't happy she died. Get me, don't get me wrong. When they put an arrow through her, I was like, oh man, that's fucked up. But, um, you know, like it was like, eh, but now that, you know, uh, what's it called? Now that, uh, uh, Fushi can talk and he can communicate. And now you saw in the, the previous episode or the, the, the most recent episode, I should say, right. um, that, that like demon tree that sucked up the, the lives that he was able to replicate. Like oh, yeah. that was interesting shit and i was like okay okay i see this and i was it you or was it dair that mentioned how like sensational it's gonna be? i might have been dair that mentioned how sensational it is thanks to the to, to the light novel is it a light novel or is it a manga it's a it's, it's a manga series yeah i have not read that yet but uh so was uh, that's, uh, he, yeah there he was, was there there was way too much hype in the beginning like how people were hyping it up yeah but uh it it, it did start growing on me ever since we, they showed us march and all that mm-hmm I agree. So I look forward to it. That's normally the on. I, I always laugh that my Mondays are sad, sad anime Mondays because I start off with um. I start off with with an easy anime. I start off with a uh, Mars Red, right? Which is, you know, nice, nice anime for anybody that hasn't watched Mars Red already. It's about um. It's about uh vampires in Japan in the 1920s, and it's a pretty unique series. So if you like a lot of blood and you like vampires, um, and some some decent action, the animation is not bad. It's certainly unique um it, this would be something for you to watch you know it's not going to be like oh my god the top one of the top anime of the season but it, it's certainly not a shitty one so i would you know say if you want to watch something cool you can watch that um start off with that then i go with you to your eternity then i go to koikimo which um you, you haven't watched the last episode right i have not no 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 I'm, i i plan to later <laughs> i'm so like everything about koikimo for me is fabulous i love everything about koikimo Except just the, the premise, story. just the premise, and it's not like Hidge Hero, which is one of my other breakout animes of the season, which I tout. That's another one of the animes that I tout on the on, oh, on yeah. the in the group is Hidge Hero. I love Hidge Hero. It's not even like Hidge Hero, where you have the the wholesome twenty six year old that's trying to make sure that the sixteen year old or seventeen year old recognizes that she has self value and self worth, and she's amazing. Like this guy is is just a fucking creep. Like Rio is a fucking creep, dude. Like, I, there's no other way around it. There's no reason for you to be 26 years old and be the acting chief of a company, and you want to get with a 16 year old girl. And I don't get me wrong, I love, 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 love. Um, uh, fuck, what's her name now? Um, the the main one or the sister? No, the main one. Um, uh, Ichika. So, like, Ichika's a wonderful character. And every time I see Ichika and I see, um, what's his face? Uh, Tamaru. Right. I, I, like, yo, that's the perfect ship. Like, they should be together. They should be happy. Like, they like the same things. I mean, Tamaru reminds me a little bit of Hachiman from, uh, from, uh, my. Origaru. Yeah. Yeah, from Origaru. And, you know, it, it could be funny in a way. And, and you know, Tamaru's not my favorite character, but, like, that is a real natural love. And the same thing with Ryo and, and Arietti. I love Arietti. I think Arietti is my favorite character in the whole fucking show. I right. adore Arietti because, from my perspective, like, she would be the type of girl that I would want to get with. Successful in, in, a, nice, in, a, in a nice job. Loves anime. Like, secret otaku. Pretty. Oh, yeah. Cares. Like she's wonderful. Like I love Arietti, and to, and her and and Rio would be fabulous. And instead, it's ass backwards. Like what <laughs> the fuck? Like right. it makes no sense. Like literally, 
I think my only saving grace is just everything else about the anime. Because if it wasn't for the fact that everything else in the anime was absolutely fabulous, the OP, the ED, the animation, um, I would have dropped it ages ago. I would have dropped it after like episode one or two because it's just that but premise. At, is just but at crazy. the same time, I am curious how it ends. That's the problem. So I saw. I saw a manga spoiler when I was on Twitter looking for a for a picture for one of the threads on that Monday, okay. and so I know something that happens, and I'm like, dude, why? Just why? <laughs> why? I, I'm sure you could probably infer what I'm saying, but why? Yeah, yeah I know. Come on. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> and you haven't seen the new Hitch Hero, right? No, no. Again, this this week just sucks for trying to catch up. Uh, but yeah, so I'll but definitely no. get to watch two episodes tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, dude. No, Hitch Hero was a good episode. It wasn't as bad as uh as episode, I think it was five. It was episode five. Yeah, yeah it was episode five. Um it wasn't as bad or dramatic as episode five when you had that creep that um Oh my god, I wanted to punch him. <laughs> you wanna know something? I will give you a small spoiler. Yeah. He actually he saves um he saves Sayu in episode really? six. Oh, and that's okay. all I'll say. He saves Sayu. Which is pretty cool to see. So he's not as he he's getting some of his his, his good points back. You know he's still kind okay. of a douchebag, but you know he's uh he's getting his cool points back. Some cool points. So good for him. Um, but All yeah, right. it, wasn't as, it wasn't as bad of an episode. wasn't as dramatic. Um, wasn't as emotional. Um, the end uh will be like oh shit it it create it the end creates intrigue for the rest of the season. Um, I saw the spoiler on uh, for this episode already on Analyst when I was just clicking on one of the characters and I saw um, who the they, who they introduced a new character and so I saw who this character was and and what their background is so I have an idea. Uh, it actually I'm sorry they introduced two characters um, that'll have some significance going forward. Um, I saw like I said I saw that uh, spoiler with Hitch Hero and then the same day I saw a spoiler with um with uh oh, what the uh, Yoshida and it's in the manga that Yoshida gets some ass. And that's all I'll say. He actually gets an ass <laughs> in the manga. So I mean that that was pretty wild. So um, but yeah, no. I, again, Hichiro is one of the the episodes and one of the animes that I champion so hard for because of how sensational the story is uh, of a teen girl that's running away from difficult circumstances and unfortunately has to give up her body um to these creeps to to just spend the night at a house and then gets booted out when um they realize like oh it's not worth the trouble to have a sixteen year old runaway because then I can go to jail as it is you already had sex with a underage girl for however old you are so that's not you know the, the problem right but um no just seeing yoshida take sayu in and, and nurture her and show her the, the value of her body and uh for her soul and and how wonderful kind that like is it's kind of like a rehab <laughs> it is it, it basically is like a rehab and um there's a scene in episode six where um where sayu and yoshida get closer themselves um right. and so i, I they're kind of wanting to build that romance between Sayu and Yoshida, which I'm not really for. But the way they've done it doesn't make me against it compared to Koikimo, which is just egregiously fucking disgusting. At least right. with his hero, when they're building the 6-year-old and 26-year-old love, like, basically Yoshida's playing big brother, so it's odd. But it's so right. respectful. Not sexual, not creepy, not overbearing or forceful. It is very natural. And, and that's what any type of love, no matter who you love, how you love, everything should be natural and honest. And so I appreciate that very much when it comes to Hit Hero. And that's one of the reasons why I recommend that out there for y'all. Yeah, it's definitely a great series. I know the light novel is ending sometime in June. So yeah. to see how that's going to end. I just saw it, actually that the 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 um, the writer for the light novel is coming out with another another series basically at the end of the year um, to oh. replace that. I don't know if it's related. I don't think it is, but um, it's another uh, rom com, I believe. So um, that'll be interesting to see how that goes. And oh, I'm they down pick for that, that then. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, what else have we seen? Um, you haven't seen uh, Nagatoro. So, what are your thoughts on Nagatoro? I know you haven't seen the most recent episode of Nagatoro, but tell me. Uh... What, as, as, as a fan, with, with all like these teasing type characters, mm -hmm. I like I like it, but at the same time, she's a little too much. Yeah, I mean, it, I, it, it, it's at the point where it can get kind of obnoxious at times. So the last couple of episodes, though, she's not been as bad, and she's been very protective because her friends are even worse than her, as far as I'm concerned. I right. think her friends are 
way worse than Nagatoro. And seeing her be like defensive over Senpai is nice. And you haven't seen the most recent episode, but there's a, kind of a nice moment between them. And right. I saw the preview for episode seven, I think, which is next week. And yeah. it's a Hanabi. It's it's a Hanabi episode for. For those who don't know, Hanabi means fireworks in Japanese. For anybody that doesn't really pay attention to um, any type of plots with fireworks, they're normally really nice. You either get a confession, you get um, burgeoning feelings that you know become more obvious, you get beautiful scenery with the animation and the music. So I'm very much looking forward to next week's episode, which is a Hanabi episode um, between the two at a, at a festival. Um, I did see another uh, clip of them, and they're of course they're torturing Senpai because Senpai, you know, likes to be tortured. I so. know he he secretly really likes it. It's just <laughs> wait, wait till you see the scene in episode in in this past week's uh, Nagatoro <laughs> with uh, it, it, bro, it's like some torture porn shit. Oh my god, <laughs> it, it's not uh, like egregious, but it's literally like between the three girls and, and Senpai, it's like torture porn. That's all I'll say. All right, uh, but no, I, I, I go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say that um I, I can understand people's perspectives over like the whole bullying aspect, um and the whole idea of like oh I like you let me torture you you know right. I understand like the negatives to that and uh, but the way the comedy is done um it, it's a lot of comedy it's just the comedy is great as far as I'm concerned yeah the premise is is hurtful I know there are people out there that have been tortured and people that have been bullied I've been bullied myself I understand how painful that is but you know. Any of the times that I've been bullied, it was never as funny as what I'm seeing in Nagatoro. So right. <laughs> um, I don't mind it in the least. And it's become one of the group's uh, breakout animes. It's maybe not mine. Um, it's one of my favorites, but it's not a breakout for me necessarily compared to Hichiro or 86 or Fruits this season. But um, a lot of our group at Eat the Cake, they adore uh, Nagatoro and the hijinks that ensues with that. So it's, it's right. an interesting uh, dynamic that we have with that. What were you going to say? I was gonna say, uh, I know you haven't seen these, but uh, combat combats will be dispatched. Is, I, I wanted to. I, I it's want hysterical. To if you love Konosuba, I Konosuba is my favorite anime of all time because of how hysterical it is. I pissed right. myself laughing. I don't know how many times during the pandemic. <laughs> I wish I had watched Konosuba before after I had watched Clan Ad, Violet Evergarden, and Bunny Girl Senpai. I right. unfortunately watched it before that uh, happened. Um, I did make up with it by watching Isekai Quartet. Which was almost as funny. Um, still pretty funny in its own right. I still, so think, I, I still think they're funny. <laughs> it, huh? Yeah, I, I think they're funny because that's the thing. I, I haven't, I, I haven't watched any of those when I watched it, but I knew of the characters. <laughs> oh man, I made it a point to go before I watch Isekai Quartet. I made it a point to go through. I watched Tanya the Evil, which is, by the way, anybody out there, if you haven't seen Tanya the Evil, very underrated series that not enough people talk about, and I really hope they come out with a second season between the first season and the movie which were both great. Um, I hope they come out with a second season. But Tiny the Evil is probably the least funny out of the Isekai Quartet, but the way they portrayed the Isekai Quartet was hilarious. Um, oh, yeah. What else? The Konosuba, Isekai Quartet, ReZero, of course, everybody's and seen Overlord. ReZero. And Overlord. You haven't seen Overlord yet, dude? Uh, no, not yet, actually, but I plan oh, to, especially after season four being announced. Yeah, it's coming out in 2022, so I would definitely recommend it. Again, not as funny as Konosuba, but it's got its funny moments uh, right. for sure. So you'll definitely chuckle. Um, season one is pretty funny. Season two is probably like my, my least favorite season. And season three ramps up some of the funniness again. So um, right. that's my, my two cents on Overlord. Definitely worth a watch for anybody out there that wants to chuckle um, at an anime. Um, any any of the ones that we mentioned. Konosuba is a must watch for anybody that loves comedy anime. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and then is once you're done with all of those, Isekai Quartet. And then the unofficial fifth uh, uh, Isekai of the Isekai Quartet is Rising of Shield Hero. Um, they, they do make a... Actually, then they have the sixth one, too, which is Cautious Hero. That's one oh, of the my ones... God. I love Cautious Hero. <laughs> uh, it's, one of, it's one of the next ones on my list is Cautious Hero. So I definitely plan to watch Cautious Hero. Um, uh, they both make cameos. Between uh, Shield Hero and Cautious Hero, they make cameos as the fifth and sixth uh unofficial isekais of the isekai quartet so any of those animes definitely would recommend you guys watch for any type of chuckles um that you may want maybe oh, yeah. actually it's not as funny yeah but sure. anyway combat dispatch is funny so far uh, i have been i got some laughs it's uh basically he's a villain the the main guy agent number six him and alice are technically villains and they have to take over they basically they like they're spies basically they go to this world they spy on them and then eventually take over for their leaders. And he has to get evil points. For evil if he wants points. 
Yeah, it cause no, because you buy they buy weapons with these. Like uh, Alice has a shotgun and a bazooka and landmines. Yeah, but this. so how do you get evil points? Do you like rob somebody? Oh no, he has to no, village. He he looked under a handy uh, uh a crippled skirt. <laughs> Wow. Uh, the girl in the wheelchair. He looked up her like he like woof up her, under her skirt. He got evil points. You get, he has to do evil things like magically unzip his pants to show his crotch or steal. Also, oh, it's super sexual. Okay, but he doesn't show it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> but but the, the the fan service is there, and okay. like he has he has to do all this stuff to get those points. And if he gets more points, then he could buy weapons for the mission that's odd but oddly interesting too at the same time yeah i'll make that a, i'll make that a watch at some point for sure um that sounds that sounds pretty funny considering oh god he looked up yes. a, cri- a, a crippled person's skirt what kind of sick but freak is she's that part, she's part Christ. she's part she's part of the team and she's important to the team so then how is that evil if you actually know the person i thought it was just a random like, no, 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 person no, 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 on the street no, 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 and no, i was like wow no, what he, the, no, he the didn't know her when sexual he did assault it. is that he, he, oh he didn't, know he didn't know her when he did it like okay. i'm like i like i need a team and like hey here's these guys uh, she's a necromancer Whoop. oh my god <laughs> and they don't say how many points he gets but he got points <laughs> oh my god dude yeah that sounds interesting i might watch that one yeah, it's definitely funny. And then uh, Shadow's House is unique. It's mm-hmm. it is good. I got this was recommended by a friend of mine because uh, I gave him one to write priorities. Like, okay, fine, I'll watch this. And uh, here you mm-hmm. go, watch this. Mm-hmm. Right. Good straight. Okay, so basically, it's about it's it's called, it's, it's called a shadow house. The house is full of shadows. Like the main people mm-hmm. are shadows. Like there's no there's just black with clothes on. Is that like a horror type? Because that sounds like a horror type of thing, right? A house of shadows. That's it, kind of it, it, it it looks like it. The atmosphere is like it, but uh, I know the mo- apparently in the manga it's depressing, but this one's lo- a little more coming to life. Like it's like a little more wholesome. Okay. Basically, with these shadows, uh, they have they have dolls too that look like humans. Like they're they're technically human, but they're called living dolls. Hmm. They, they they look exactly like them. Their job is to basically clean, get rid of all the the suit, the, the like the black stuff. Mm-hmm. They do that and they act as their owners' faces. So like however their the shadows are expressing themselves when they talk, they make those faces to show like hey hey that's the face they're making bro, basically. Bro, that's if you're scared that, of puppets, if you're scared of puppets, that's not a good look. <laughs> But I said they look completely human. They eat. They do all that. They do all that stuff. Uh, it, it is an interesting watch. Uh, I wouldn't call it a favorite, but it's one of those. It's enough to keep me going to want to know what's next. Sure. Well, that makes sense. Eh, it's not bad. Uh, so far, combatants is winning from your from your selling. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. So definitely combatants. Uh, but what you call it? Uh, what have you seen that I have not? I know. I know you have a couple. Uh, so I'm watching *Soma Spider*. So what? I, I, this, I know you don't like the uh, the the CGI, but the story itself is phenomenal. I mean, and you've watched enough to understand the story. For those who haven't oh, yeah. watched *Soma*, so what? Um, you're basically in an anime with two different timelines. One, which is the main the main main character, uh, Kumo, which is the spider, um, is 15 years in the past. Our second main character, Shun, which is one of her classmates, which you'll understand why they're classmates, is 15 years in the future. And so their their timelines are basically going to intersect um, until this great, I guess, great event uh, involving a demon lord. So um, it's got a lot of twists and turns that you're like, whoa, didn't expect that. Um, action is pretty cool. Again, c- some of the CGI, you know, can be a little, huh? So I get that. But I can, right. me personally, I, I don't have an issue with that. Um, let me see. I mean, oh, what else? Full, are you watching Full Dive? Uh, no, I am not. <laughs> full Dive? So the... Full dive is the short term, easy easy thing to remember. The full anime name is Full Dive. This ultimate next gen full dive RPG is even shittier than real life. That is the actual title. It is funny. That is my, I guess it's not. I I don't, I don't know if it'll be as funny as Combatants uh, as the special way you described it, but it's pretty funny. Basically, um, this kid uh is tortured. I guess not tortured, but he's like he's haunted by um being uh like the super cool track guy, and then he like fails at track one day and he pisses himself on the course 
Um, and so um, he says, fuck track, I'm never doing it again. I'm going to get into video games. And he gets into a video game where it's super duper realistic, where like if you get stabbed, you feel pain. If you like lose an arm, you feel pain. You don't get that arm back either. Um, and to the point where if you die in the game, you don't die in real life, thank God. It's not oh, uh, sort of online. But um, your console, which they have as 150,000 yen, which is uh, $1,500, I think. No, that's uh, 15,000, right? 150, yeah, 150,000 yen, I believe, is $15,000. Um, that console blows the shit. So if you die in this game, you basically have just lost $15,000. Um, so uh, the premise of that is basically he has to go through and try and figure it out. And um, yeah, there's a lot of twists and turns involving that. Um, but it's hilarious the way that the, the twists and turns occur and his responses and his reactions uh, in between the semi-serious moments of his like trauma uh, involving pissing himself is right. quite funny as a whole. So um, I, I, again, not a favorite, but... Uh, I, I like it. I definitely like it. I get entertainment from that. Um, What else? Um, Osamake? I'm watching Osamake. Um, I was, you know, Osamake was fantastic, the first three episodes. And then they burnt through the plot after the first three episodes. I'm like, Jesus, right. where do you go from here? And so it's been okay thus far, but I, I don't think it's captured the same effect as the first three episodes. Um, You haven't seen the latest episode. There's a small twist. I have you, a... I think, but this. Yeah, there's a small twist at the end of this episode that you're like, oh, I see where they're going to go with that. They're going to explore more in uh, one of the side characters' story. Um, so I think that's the direction they're going to go, and that'll be somewhat interesting. So, uh, But yeah, Osamake was fantastic the first three episodes. Kind of fell off. It's not terrible by any means, but it's not hitting the way it was before for me, at yeah. least. I, I, I still can't get over the fact that uh, the main character is still the same voice actor as uh, Betsugu's Conti from ReZero. <laughs> Yeah, dude, and he's. I was like, same. "Come on!" <laughs> I believe it's the same as I think it's Kirito and Asuna too, right? The two main characters, and uh, and Inosuke, and Inosuke. Oh, I hate Inosuke. It's one of the reasons why I never rate Demon Slayer ten because I hate Inosuke so much. <laughs> he's hilarious and so aggravating at the same time. Like, fuck, bro. Uh, by the way, uh, while we were talking, I have an interview up. Uh, they explained uh, why light novels have long titles. Oh, really? Why is that? Uh, Kakehiro Takemi, the author of How to Melt the Ice Queen's Heart, he actually explained this when he was asked this question. Mm -hmm. The answer is, the question is, that question is so great. This background is a long story to explain. Many Japanese readers now want the title alone to explain the entire novel. They use the title to decide whether to buy the novel or not, which is why a detailed explanation is required. Inevitably, there will be many long titles, I didn't like that, so I made much. So I made mine a short one. How fickle! So now we know why. <laughs> I mean, some of them are really entertaining, but you know. Oh, they are, but but now we know. But now we know, like why? Because they want you to, like, they been, want you to buy. I've, like I've been killing slimes for three hundred years and maxed out my power level. I mean, that explains yes. the anime pretty well. Oh, you watched that one, by the way? I have not. No, I, I thought about it. Was that good? <laughs> It's okay. It's a very so most of the episodes are wholesome. There are a couple episodes that are not very wholesome, um, but not egregious at all. You know, I wouldn't say you know you'd want to watch it around kids, but at the same time, if a kid saw it, you're not going to be like, oh my god, shield your eyes. The most of the other anime is very wholesome as a whole. So out of the wholesome category, I would say um, it's not bad. Uh, the main character, as the, the, the title suggests, she has maxed out her power level. She's level 99, and she's ridiculously OP. Like, she can make her own magic for just anything she wants, and it fucking works. Um, and so, yeah, there's some moments that are funny, um, as well, so you do get some comedy. So, again, not a favorite, but entertaining, for sure. It's my wholesome anime. I believe those come that comes out uh, Saturday. So I still always start off with that one. Start off very nice and wholesome. So anybody that likes any wholesome animes, any cute animes. And it's all involving women, too. There hasn't been a single man, really, um, that's right. really been there. It's all when Every character, every any type of significant character is always a woman. So if you like, you know, femininity out there, it's like, you know, powerful femininity in an anime, that, that would be one that you want to watch. Um. What else? I'm watching Cespus. Are you watching Cespus? Uh, no. What? Cesp so Cespus. If you want to talk about bad CGI, it's got bad CGI. Even I, who I don't really care about bad uh, CGI. X arm. X arm was terrible CGI. Oh my god. So this has really bad CGI. 
but it's really cool. It basically is like MMA in the Roman gladiator era. So instead of like fighting with like swords and chain balls with spikes, like they're fighting with with boxing and MMA. And so if right. you anybody that likes Megalobox, I would definitely recommend it. Um, if you can get past the whole premise of the bad CGI, it's a really good story. Basically, it's a it's it's kind of like it reminds me a lot of uh, Spartacus from that standpoint. It's like Spartacus meets anime meets MMA. Um, so if you like any parts of that, that would be something that I would recommend to you. Um, I definitely enjoy it. Um, the main character is an underdog of sorts as well. So if you like any underdog stories, um, guys fighting for their survival and fighting for their futures, again, another anime I would probably recommend for you as well. Um, but yeah, I guess my main thing that I love to harp on every week, one of my favorites is Fruits Baskets. I, are you, you're watching Fruits Baskets, right? I have actually have not. Uh, I came in too uh, late, so I'm gonna wait till it's over and then binge it, and binge it all. The season or the series? The whole series, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh my god! So you're gonna cry? Yeah, it's one of those animes that make you cry. <laughs> every, at almost every episode this season, there's been six episodes. Four of them, I've I've cried. Two of the four, I've just fucking been like tears, tears upon tears the whole episode. It's got like re zero shocking twists with beautiful like sadness with like oh god with touching love with uh cute like funny like like lines with the different characters um it's got gay representation with one of the uh, the main characters of the somas is a, a cross dresser um it's got anything that you would probably want um, it's even got a little bit of a yaoi feel with one of the characters he turns out he's not yaoi he's he's straight right. but you know, he acts in that manner. He acts gay, but it, it's got everything you would want when it comes to to, to an anime. I adore Fruits Baskets. It, it's I can get in my feels so quickly, and I've invested so much in these characters because of how sensational the story is. Um, it, it's absolutely fabulous. Something I would one thousand percent recommend to anyone that wants to see a, a really, really fantastic slice of life anime. It, it's got to be Fruits Baskets for sure. Yeah, uh, I definitely could definitely check it out when it came out. Because again, it was one of those I didn't know if it was like a reboot or a new one. Then I saw there was another season. I was like, okay, well, I'm too late probably, so I'm gonna wait. So it's but, a uh, reboot, yeah. So they had you have the they had the light they had the manga rather or the light novel again. I don't know the difference. I'm sorry for those out there. Um, but yeah. they had the story and then they made a, a anime. And I believe it was like 1999 or 2002. One of the either 99 or 02. And it was one season. It was okay, and they stopped there. And so this is a reboot of the original Fruit Baskets, except they expand on the whole the whole story. And so that's okay. why it's last series. And it's a long series. When you think about it. each season is 24 episodes. So 24, 48, you're going to get seven, six, 72, yep. 72, 72 episodes out of this. And, and it will be 1000 percent worth your time if you enjoy emotional series um, with a little bit of quirks and, and can appreciate um wonderful slice of life and different walks of life within said slice of life so for sure also real quick we want to give a birthday shout out to kape yamaguchi who was born on may 23rd as we're recording this he has voiced l from death note mm-hmm. Uso from one piece uh shinchi kudo from detective conan he voiced Idiyasha, mm-hmm. jin from yu yu show uh shigechi from uh jojo uh he's he voiced a lot of characters so i hate happy it, birthday. i hate it shigechi hate it shigechi when i, 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 I don't worry i do too oh, but um uh, but yeah great voice actor happy happy 56th birthday from us to him <laughs> my little bit of weed them in there you speak, <laughs> you, speak, you speak a little japanese don't you eh, skoshi a little yeah, I don't know how to say it. I, I didn't know Scotia means a little. Yeah, Scotia means a little, yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm at the point now where I understand a lot of words. Yeah, I always tell this as, as a funny story. Um, a couple weeks ago, I was looking at a Japanese porn, right? It was one of those nights. <laughs> and um, I'm watching it, and I'm literally listening to the characters talk, and I stopped because I understood every line that was mentioned. It was... I, I popped. I literally stopped what I was doing. Y'all know what I was doing. I stopped and was just giggling hysterically that I understood the I understood this whole like sequence that was going on between the male and the female. Oh right. my god, it was hilarious. And so I've gotten to the point where I, now I can understand small lines in, uh, <laughs> in Japanese porn. 
But, all right, uh, all, all that we know. <laughs> right? On that note, that's a good way to end off. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, but yeah, we are definitely going to talk more about what we've seen and have a better formula. Because again, this is the pilot. We're learning. Uh, we're, we're it's the first time talking to each other mm-hmm. like this instead of just texting. <laughs> No, it's got, and we got a good vibe so far. We got a good vibe. We're going to work on it. It's going to get better for sure. I, I like what yeah. we got so far. Um, one thing I would like for anybody listening out there, let us know what you want us to talk about. Um, like I said, like we said, like Matthew said, we're going to talk about um, the various animes per week. That's kind of going to be like the, the, the main thing that we do based off of what we initially got as feedback from the group. Uh, they want weekly recaps and suggestions um, for some of the series. Um, we're going to try, at least, I, at least I'm going to try not to focus on someone like, you know, we have the My Heroes and, um, and again, Fruits is fairly popular as well. Um, I personally don't want to really spend as much time on them because there's so many people that watch it and can have group discussions. I want to focus on the other ones so we can try and get more popularity for some of these, like the Two Year Eternities, the Hitch Heroes, 86, BB. Right. Like we want to get more people. At least that's my thought. I want to get more people into watching to some watch of the them. stuff that we're watching exactly. because we have such a diverse you know, palette of anime per season. So that's our thought press for anybody out there. But of course, you know, we will touch on those um, for sure. Uh, all the popular ones. Um, I I'm, don't watch One Piece, but I know I'm sure Angel would love to for us to talk about One Piece. Um, I won't talk about Boruto with everybody because clearly everybody hates Boruto in the group, minus select few people. So I won't talk about <laughs> that. So, uh, yeah. Anybody out there, just let us know what you want us to talk about. Um, again, we're going to throw suggestions out there for any type of uh, animes that uh, oh man, my uh, my headphones. Oh yeah, uh, oh yeah. Uh, show, uh, me, shows, shows, movies, hear me certain. Yeah, I can hear you. All right, my headphones just died, so I had to change the batteries on those. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but shows, it, movies, any certain topics, we can definitely cover whatever they want us to talk about. For sure, for sure. All right, everyone. Uh, I think that is it. Um, plug in your podcast. Uh, what else you do? <laughs> Oh, yeah. So you, anybody who wants to follow me on Instagram, you can find follow me at uh, podcast, P-O-D-C-A-S-T dot period, uh, Senpai, C-E-N-P-A-I. Uh, that is my podcasting Instagram where you can find uh, my other two podcasts, the Orlando Tragic Podcast for anybody that lives in Orlando or in Florida. Um, hilarious times. Very NSFW. Um, more NSFW than anything else that I do. And then you can also find me at MMA for Marks, my MMA podcast. Um, that's what I do for anybody that loves combat sports, uh, Bellator, UFC, boxing. Uh, we will talk about that. Um, new episodes come out for the Orlando Tragics every other week. Um, I record the MMA for Marks every week. Um, it's a little bit difficult because my co- uh, co-host is uh, very busy, but we'll put those out there. Anybody else follow my anime Instagram, you can follow me at I A I underscore anime, A-N-I-M-E. Love anime. That's what it means in Japanese. Um, that is my personal anime page where I post daily updates on uh, the weeklies that I am watching. And I will post also miscellaneous things involving anime, whether it be stuff that I see, stuff that I buy, stuff that I want, um, other animes that are non-seasonal specific that I'll talk about. Um, yeah, you can follow me at any of those. And uh, yeah, I look forward to any interactions with all of you. All right. And uh, follow me on Twitter at DamienPhoenix12. Uh, you can find my stuff there. Uh, I'm a writer for The Chair Shot and Pro Wrestling Post. I, t- uh, I cover uh, Puro Wrestling, like wrestling in Japan, All Japan, Real Dragon Gate, Noah. Real quick, I'll, when we mentioned the Rest in Peace. I also want to shout out a Rest in Peace to uh, Hannah Kimura. It has been one right, year. The one year. Yesterday since she passed away. Um, one of the things I got to look forward to is um, uh, Ernie from the group had bought the uh, pay-per-view. So I'm going to watch the... Uh, uh, Hannah Matane, uh, pay per view. Um, I'm looking yeah, forward yeah. to that. I, I'm gonna be watching that too because uh, I was actually at an event when that was going on. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I heard that it's super tragic too. Like, I heard that uh, Ernie said the last 30 minutes of that show is is incredibly sad. And I believe one of the other, uh, I don't know whether it was Meltzer or whether it was just some uh, some blogger that he follows, but he mentioned how um, the Brody Lee tribute uh, that happened on AEW was com- fabulous and so fitting. And they mentioned that the ha- the Hannah Kimura tribute was equally as befitting for such a wonderful girl so oh, yeah. um real quick buddy that uh is going through depression or bullying um please reach out to someone no matter who i guarantee you there's someone out there that'll want to listen to you um and your struggles versus being at your funeral so for sure um that is my message of hope out there there's somebody out there that'll 
to listen for you. Also, real it, quick, um, we, it's also May twenty third. I was say, okay, go ahead. <laughs> no, I was gonna say it's also May twenty third. I wanted to shout out. This is the what twenty third anniversary of Owen Hart dying. So right. rest in peace, Owen Hart as well. But yeah, as I was as I was saying, we'd rather hear your problems than hear your eulogy. So yep, that's the same. So definitely. You. Yeah. Also. Also, I also have another podcast called Suwama Station, that's, which covers all Japan pro wrestling. I'm the co-host of that. Uh, you can find that on YouTube or Chairshot Radio. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for joining us in the first episode. Uh, we are going to do a lot better for the next week, and uh, we hope to hear some interactions for the next show. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Matane.